Alright guys, welcome back to another Friday Night Magic stream here at Lost Legion Games and Comics in South Charleston, West Virginia. My name, as always, is Zachary Evans. I'm by myself tonight, but we've got Theros Booster Draft action for you. It is, in fact, the Theros release. The first day you can officially buy the set is today. So we're drafting pretty much from the time the store opened until uh, the time the store closes tonight or until people lose interest and we've got a feature draft lined up for you right here. Uh, hopefully you watched as we watched Michael Taylor make his picks during the actual draft, and we're going to watch him in round one, and then coverage of the winners uh, on through the end of this three-round pod. So on the left, we've got Yen Sang, who's playing a very aggressive Boros aggro deck, and then, of course, on the right is Michael Taylor, who we saw draft a Orzhov deck that uh, has a lot of one-drops and then a lot of uh, bestow creatures with some late-game removal, so it'll be interesting to see how these pair off, I think, in a vacuum, uh, Yin's got to be a huge favorite here, starting off with his uh, one drop into the 2-2 two, uh, two, two flyer, the 2-1 flyer, I believe it is. I know what these cards do, I don't know their names exactly, but I will uh, load up the, the spoiler here. Yin's, go Yin's going to add a turn 3 Fire Drink Crusader, a Jackal Pup uh, improvement. Of course, a lot of people, seems like a lot of people this day and age don't know exactly how good Jackal Pup was at one point. I'm not saying it's necessarily uh, the greatest card anymore as Magic's uh, power level has kind of gotten to the point where a 2 1 with drawback is that great. But, <coughs> excuse me, it is still a 2 power 1 drop. And it is a decent mana sink in the late game, so we'll see how that works out for you. Michael. Is uh, showing the problem that his deck has. He ended up with not enough, uh, not really a good enough curve here. I don't think he has a single two drop in the deck, and he's playing, uh, I think, five one drops, two of which are these uh, one one regenerate guys. They're not really that great at all. Of course, that regenerator is going to keep the uh, the satyr from attacking. Well, no, I think uh, he's just content to uh, to trade it off here. I guess just to push the damage home. thinking better of it here, uh, leaving the satyr back, which I think you don't want to attack with here, because there's really no point in forcing one damage through if, uh, I guess Yen is representing a, a, a uh, trick here. And he's going to add, um, what's that, a crow and hoplite, I think. So the favorite hoplite comes in, it is a 1-2, so it can get around the, uh, get around the blocker, then Michael's going to take it out post-combat. Having uh, reasonably stabilized here, Yin with a lot of heat, but uh, the regenerate guy is doing a pretty good job of holding off his team. So Michael loading up a 4-drop here. Then Yin finds his third land here. He's going to serve him with the entire team. The Hoplite is going to trigger. He's going to get plus three, plus zero. And Michael tries to figure out what blocks he has. He's just going to block the Seder with the Regenerator. Then a combat, tr a combat trick is going to save Yen's creature. It's going to drop Michael down to 12. So Michael left with just the Insatiable Harpy, the 2 2 Flying Lifelinker. He has a missed land drop, though. We do know that he has a uh, sip of Hemlock on 6. He also has uh, the Lifelink Eidolon creature as well. Not necessarily that great on the Harpy. We're going to see another removal spell take out the uh, Pegasus. I wasn't, I'm not sure exactly what that was. I 
that's the Viper's Kiss. One cost enchantment, target creature gets minus one, minus one, and his activated abilities can't be activated, so uh, an effective arrest effect, but in this case just using it as a tragic slip. And then Michael's going to serve in with his 2-2 lifelinker and try and get this uh, race under control, which allows Jin to serve in with both the satyr and his across in the hoplite, so it should be one, two, three, four, five, I think? Let's see if Michael has a response. And then you're just going to hard cast the 2 2 first strike bestow creature. As he's a long way off of uh, being able to bestow it. So, Michael, tapping deep here. We're going to see the Griffin. Nope, we're going to see the Gray Merchant. So, drain life effect equal to the devotion to black. So, that's going to be a uh, four point life swing, it looks like. And after the attack in from the lifelinker, somehow uh, Michael is uh, moved ahead here. As Yin's deck, uh, very aggressive, but uh, struggling against the uh, all removable deck of Michael, along with the life gain from both the Grey Merchant and the Harpy. So Yin serving in with everybody here. 2 2 first striker, what I believe is a 4 2 hoplite. And then a 2-1 Fire Drinker Seder. So something's going to get blocked by the Grey Merchant. It's just a matter of what. And it looks like Michael's not going to block anything. I'm going to go all the way down to... F to five here. So Michael in a spot here, not necessarily dead on board, he does have blockers, but uh, low on life, of course he's life linking. Uh... Oh, and here's a pretty big blow. We're going to put the the bestow lifelink creature onto his gray merchant, making the 3 5 lifelinker. We're going to cast a traveler's amulet. Now, is Micro going to attack? No, he's not, so he's going to leave back his team. 3 5 lifelinker, a 2 2 flying lifelinker, and Yen draws a mountain off the top here. Can't see what cards are in his hand. Both of them look live. One that looks like is a combat trick, and the other one I believe is a, uh, is it a Titan Strength? No, it's not a Titan Strength, it's a red, red enchantment, I think. It's a Stone Shock Giant, I think. But, uh, Yen choosing not to cast it. 5-4 with a Monstrous. Monstrosity, I should say, not Monstrous. So I thought Yin passed back, but we might be uh, still waiting here for Yin to decide what he wants to do. He can't really afford to attack in here, as his uh, Hoplite's not big enough to trade with the bestowed Grey Merchant, and his other creatures are just going to run into things, and uh, Michael's going to gain a lot of life. There is, in fact, the Stone Shock Giant, a 5-4 base, can go Monstrous 3 for 8 mana. We're a long way from that, uh, but if it does go Monstrous... Creatures without flying can't block this turn, so he can falter. Uh, Michael's team, Michael going to cycle his uh, Traveler's Amulet. Thin his deck out a little bit. Oh, he, he found a, a gray sp uh, green splash. <laughs> Not sure what uh, green card he decided to, uh, to add to the deck on the final build. The chat saying I'm very somber today. Well, the problem is is that uh, I'm not nearly as familiar with this these cards as I would like to be. But more importantly, uh, these guys, there's... Uh, I'm afraid if I talk too loud, I'm going to, they're going to hear me out there. Because while there's a lot of people here, they're all up at the front of the store. So I don't want to interfere with the actual game. So Michael tapping two for the uh, equipment that makes your guys unblockable. Or effectively unblockable. 
Now might be the point where uh, Michael can load up on his big uh, life linking guy, make it unblockable, and just try and race it that way. Of course, you open yourself up to uh, getting crushed on the way back as Yin does now have a five power guy. Michael's just going to sit on it, so we just play the uh, waiting game here. Prowler's Helm is the name of that uh, creature, it can only be blocked by walls. And Yin says, I'm just going to serve in with everybody and make you figure out what, uh, what the right blocks are. So the 3-5 on the Seder, and the uh, Hoplite's going to get chumped out by the Harpy. So there's 7 damage coming through, and we know there's a trick, but of course the way Lifelink works, uh, Michael is going to survive this turn as it stands. So there's the first uh, combat check, coordinated assault. Up to two target creatures each get plus one, plus zero, and gain first strike until end of turn. So he's going to give it to the Hoplite for sure. I don't know who the second one was. Then here's another white combat check. I think up to two target creatures get plus one, plus one, and some other effect. So I'm sure this is good enough if, uh, if Yen was attacking him like that. And that is, in fact, good enough. So with the, the first strike and giving uh, his creatures plus one, plus one, that is enough to, it's a Dauntless Onslaught. Up to two target creatures get plus two, plus two until end of turn. So pumping his uh, creatures, giving them first strike, allowing them to to uh, take out Michael's two life-linking creatures, and more importantly, not giving Michael a chance to gain life off of the life-link ability. So Yin's uh, Boros deck stumbling a little bit out of the gate. It, was mul it did multi five on the play, I believe. But eventually getting there through some, uh, through the use of the Hoplite, as well as some combat tricks, and then just a relative uh, inability of Michael's deck to generate much of a ground game. Guys, thanks for watching tonight. Uh, not to, uh, People always say we don't do enough uh, limited coverage or booster draft. We do play standard here predominantly during our FNM stream, but of course every release party we do, or they used to be called launch parties. I always call them still launch party with uh, release or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we, still do, uh, we still do draft all day, so... Um, Glad you could join us for this. We will be back to new standard next week. I know we've got the first uh, major standard events. Yep, come in. Yeah. A little assistance here for a little sure, bit. Sure, that's fine. How'd your draft go, Joe? I looked pretty good. I uh, ended up drafting like red green minotaurs for the most part. Well, that's a good one. Did you get into the Lord? The Lord's no, I didn't get the Lord, but I ended up with a lot of the. I ended up with three of the two twos. It gets plus two. It has haste when it enters for three mana. Mm -hmm. And on the uh, Death Bellow Minotaur, and then some green stuff, good green stuff behind it. And cool. Nemesis of Immortality. Or, yeah, I think it's it. Uh, Nemesis of Mortals. Mortals. The, uh, like the, like, Splinter Fright type guy, or the, the yeah, one that's the, the uh, Ghoul Tree player. type guy. Yeah, less, okay. but way more playable. <laughs> way more playable. So what's going on here? Well, we watched Michael Taylor draft his deck. It's kind of a, a mess. Because he got uh, he drafted white removal very early, then got in some black cards. The black cards did not come. Uh, then they started fighting over white cards, and now his deck is like I don't know. It's threat light, removal heavy. We just see him. We just saw him lost game one against Yen's very aggressive Boros deck. I think mostly due to Michael not being able to put any creatures on the board. Yen's deck is pretty good. It's the uh, I was talking about this a little bit earlier, and uh, it's not like I'm an expert on the format by any means, but it seems like this format has a bunch of slow mid-range and controlish decks, decks that are trying to get to four, five, six, seven mana, and then this very aggressive Boros deck. Mm -hmm. But uh, you have to the Boros deck has to come together somewhat perfectly. It's not just uh, I, I imagine there's a lot of people's drafts going to be screwed by trying to draft the red white deck, mm -hmm. and then. <laughs> like the cards not being opened or someone cutting them off and then just having an unplayable deck. Yeah. Very, very plausible. So the 1-1, uh, one, one, the 1-2 heroic guy and then the uh, the white ordeal. And uh, Yen is off to the races here. Like the best start his deck could could muster, I think. That's possible. Triggering, triggering heroic. The ordeal, I think, is massive. It's not necessarily... Like super good against Michael in the sense that it's not going to be much of a race, but uh, the ten life is 
in any kind of ag yeah when you sack the white oh one gosh. you gain 10 life and it triggers on the second turn there because of because of the heroic he also gets a counter so on the third counter and then he follows up with the uh, red white hoplite which uh, basically has a wild beastmaster type effect where he gets bigger equal to the attacking creatures I noticed there is not much removal in this set and a lot of the higher end removal is very uh, very expensive it's a very expensive. I feel like saying that there's, and I'm guilty of it too, I feel like saying like there's not a lot of removal in this format is something we say about every format, but this one specifically, I think there's not a lot of not a lot of good removal by any means. And, and a lot of things like Sip of Hemlock and the um, Exile Creature 4 or greater, like they just cost a lot of mana. And so is the Whip of Lash. And four, yeah, it's a 5 drop too. And in this format, creatures can outpace that. That yes, one of the biggest play. ways to blow yourself out is to hold back a lightning strike or anger of the gods, hoping to like two for one somebody or something, or at least anger of the gods, um, because they will get so big that it won't be relevant anymore. Yeah. So Michael has a life linking eidolon on his uh, bestowed on his Lagana Band Elder, which is a three two um, vanilla basically at this point, and Yen attack, yeah, Yen attacking in with his. Uh, one drop heroic guy, the hoplite, and the two two first striker. So Michael's basically in a world of hurt here. He is going to gain uh, gain four life here, but that's assuming no combat trick. And he's going to do the exact same thing he did last game, which is use two combat tricks to pump all his dudes. And there you see the power of the uh, the Boros deck. Now I know the. Uh, most of the decks are going to be relatively slow, and I don't think Michael's deck was actually representative of some of the slower decks in the format, but with the right draws, the Sporos deck will just go crazy. Uh, you know, the combat tricks, the ones that, that do the two, you know, up to two target creatures do this, and up to two target creatures do that, uh, is very strong uh, when you can trigger Heroic twice or something like that, so... The, the fact that Heroic in a lot of the white guys is a permanent pump with it getting counters and everything mm -hmm. is a, a big deal uh, as well, too, because a lot of the other pumps and the other colors for Heroic are not a permanent effect for the, for the most part. Yep. Yeah, it's it's kind of a blowout if you can get there, so... I, think these, I, see if these, I don't know if these guys are playing for fun or we're going to move somebody over and we'll step out.